Shutter speed, the amount of time your shutter stays open. Aperture, the size of the opening that light comes in through. ISO, well, a lot of times ISO can just seem like an arbitrary number. What actually is ISO? Larry here with Southern Exposure, information and inspiration for the amateur photographer. I've been away for a while and it wasn't intentional. To be honest with you, I just kind of got lazy and stopped making videos. But I'm back today and let's talk about ISO. We all know that ISO is part of the exposure triangle and one of the drawbacks is that increasing ISO makes our images noisier. But why? Why does higher ISO mean noisy pictures? In order to understand that, we have to get a handle on what ISO actually is. We've all heard it a million times. I've even said it myself. ISO adjusts how sensitive your camera is to light. Not exactly. When you press the shutter button, the shutter and the aperture opening work together to allow a certain amount of light through the lens and onto the sensor. Those are mechanical items that we can easily visualize and understand how they work, but where was the ISO? Is it just some magical number that tells your sensor to somehow pull more light through the mechanical gatekeepers of shutter and aperture? And how would it do that anyway? I mean, the laws of physics still apply, right? So first, we have to figure out where ISO exists in the camera and what it's actually doing. What it's not doing is making your sensor more sensitive to light. That's simply not possible. When the shutter opens, each pixel on the sensor starts reacting to the light hitting it by creating an electrical signal. Then all of those individual signals are sent through the processor where they're converted to numerical values to be stored on your SD card. Where ISO physically exists in your camera is at the processor, or more accurately, between the sensor and the processor. It's a gain circuit, much like an audio amplifier. So by raising your ISO setting, you're telling that circuit how much you want to amplify the signal before storing it on your memory card. The problem is, if you have to amplify the data, that means there wasn't enough light coming in to begin with. Now, I spent about 15 years as an audio engineer, so I'm going to stick to the audio analogies. I hope it's helpful. Every recording environment, including the very best studios, has some level of background noise. Sounds coming in from the outside, hum of the HVAC system, etc. No matter where you are, there's always some level of background noise. And in recording, that's referred to as the noise floor. To get the cleanest audio recording, you have to minimize how noticeable that noise floor is. Remember, you can't eliminate it entirely. All you can do is make it less noticeable. This is where the idea of signal-to-noise ratio comes in. You want the biggest difference possible between the level of the noise floor and the level of the sounds you actually want the listener to focus on. So you raise the level of the voice or the instruments as loud as you can without causing unwanted distortion. This means there's a big difference between how loud the music is versus how loud the noise floor is. You can think of this like your shutter speed and aperture. You adjust those to let the most light possible into your sensor without unwanted side effects like motion blur. But in low light situations, sometimes you just can't let enough light in. That pianissimo passage with the flute is just too quiet, so you have to amplify the entire signal after the fact. But when you do that, you're not only increasing the volume of the flute, you're also increasing the volume of the noise floor. There's simply not enough difference between the two audio levels, and when you boost that section, the noise floor becomes noticeable to the listener and degrades the experience. And that's exactly what happens in your camera when you crank up the ISO. You see, the noise is always there, but when you have enough light coming into the sensor, there's enough separation between the data you want and the noise you don't that the noise just isn't really noticeable. Pull in less light, and you have to amplify the whole thing to make it bright enough, including the noise. The camera doesn't know the difference between the image and the noise, and it just raises everything, resulting in a noisy, grainy image. In the future, I suspect this will become less and less of a problem. We've already seen a lot of progress here where the processors are getting better at figuring out the difference between the signal and the noise. 
That's why today's cameras can perform well at much higher ISOs than cameras from just 10 years ago. Add artificial intelligence into the mix and things can get even better. Smartphones are getting really good at this. They can take multiple images very quickly, then compare them on the fly to figure out which pixels are good data and which pixels are noise and adjust accordingly. That's why Night Sight on Google's Pixel phones works so well. But in the meantime, I thought it would be helpful to shed some light on what ISO actually is and how it works, so you can make more informed decisions about camera settings when you go take pictures and have fun doing it. Thanks for watching.